Hello and Happy New Year. We are going to be wrapping up Unit 7 Pythagorean Theorem um, with this study guide. Uh, the first section of the study guide deals with estimating square roots. It's actually a pretty simple process. There's a couple steps involved, but if you take a look at the study guide and watch this video, I think you should have it under control. Estimating square roots. And these are estimating square roots that are not perfect squares. Okay, let me see if I can give you a good example, boys and girls, on how to find the square root of a number that's not a perfect square. For example, what is the square root of 20? 20 is not a perfect square like 9. 9 is, the square root of 9 would be 3 times 3. It's not a perfect square like 100, which the square root of 100 is 10, which is 10 times 10. We want to find the square root of 20. And where we start is we need to say, okay, this non-perfect non -perfect square number falls between what two perfect squares? And that would be between 16 and 25. Okay, the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. So it's somewhere, somewhere between 4 and 5. It has to be greater than 4, but less than 5. Okay, so um, that's a fractional answer. The, the somewhere in between is my fractional answer. And, and how do I get that? Well, I need to figure out um, 20 is how far along between 16 and 25? Well, let's take a number. Let's make a number line here. If this is 16, then I'd have 17, 18, 19, 20. Then I have 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 over here. Okay, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. So it's how many jumps along? Well, all together, from 16 to 25, Okay, the span between these two would be 25 minus 16, which is equal to 9. Okay, so there's 9 jumps from 16 to 25, but I want to know how far along the way I am if I want to stop at 16. Okay, and the difference between um, 20 and 16 is 4. So I'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, four ninths of the way there, and that's exactly what my answer is. My answer is four and four ninths, because I'm four ninths of the way there. But if I want to estimate to the nearest tenth, I need to take this four ninths, this four and four ninths. I need to take that fractional part and changing to division. Um, well, Every fraction I know is a division problem. So I take 4 and divide it by 9. Okay, 9 goes into 40 five times. 5, oops, no, sorry, sorry about that. It would go into it four times. Okay, because 4 times 9 is 36. I subtract and I get 4. Ah, we see what's going to happen here. It's going to be 4 for 4. It's just going to keep on repeating. I bring another 0 down. Okay, so my answer is 4.4. 4. That is my final answer to the nearest tenth. Let's take a look at another problem. Let's say if I want to find the square root of 30. Well, what do I do with that? Again, I know that 30 is not a perfect square. So my first step is, what two perfect squares is 30 in between? And I know it would be between the perfect square of 25 and 36. Okay, it's somewhere between 5 and 6. Okay, and what's my fractional part? Well, the first step is to find, I find my denominator by taking 36, okay, my two, finding the difference between my two perfect squares, 36 and 25, which is going to be 11. That's going to become my denominator. Okay, so now it's going to be 5 and so many 11ths. And then my, the difference between my um, actual number and my perfect, my first perfect square 25 is 5. Okay, and that 5, that becomes my numerator. Okay, so that's where my 11 came from and that's where that came from. So my answer is 5 and 5 elevenths, 5 and 5 elevenths. 
And again, if I want to find the nearest tenth, I need to do a little division here. But I need to change my fraction to a decimal. I know that every fraction is a division problem with a decimal answer. So I take 5 and I divide it by 11. 11 will go into 50 four times. 4 times 11 is 44. I subtract, I get 6. Bring down the 0. 11 goes into 60 five times. 5 times 11 is 55. I subtract the remainder of 5, and I can stop right there. And um, when I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, I go to my tenth spot, look at my hundredth, and my hundredth, if it's um, 5 or above, I give my tenth place a shove up, or I move it up one. So this would round um, to 0.5. So my answer is 5.5. That is my estimate, okay? The square root of 30 is approximately 5.5. Hello, boys and girls and cougar parents. The second part of our study guide deals with just simple application of the Pythagorean theorem. You're given pictures of different triangles where you're only given the lengths of the legs and you need to figure out the hypotenuse, which is side C. Okay, so just use the Pythagorean theorem, plug in the data, Use the formula, isolate the variable, and solve the problem. Okay, using the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side of a right triangle. Okay, here we have a right triangle. Now, don't be thrown off. Here is my right angle. Therefore, my two legs, okay, are what forms the right angle. And the side that is across from the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. So this could be side A, this would be side B, and then C usually represents our hypotenuse, which is across, directly across from my right angle. And the two legs are the sides of the, of the triangle that form the right angle. So I use the Pythagorean theorem just to organize my information. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. You should have that memorized by now. And I know that A is going to be 6.5, and I'm going to raise that to the second power, plus b squared. I don't know what b is. That's going to be equal to c squared, which it looks like it is 9.9 .9 to the second power. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. The second step is just substitute, fill in. And there's one unknown side, and that's side b. That's what I want to figure out. Well, okay, let's take 6.5 times 6.5, 5 times 5, would be 25, carry the 2. 5 times 6 is 30, plus the 2 is 32. Put a 0 there as a placeholder. 6 times 5 is 30, carry the 3. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 3 is 39. Okay, put a 0 and 5 is 5. 2 and 0 is 2. 3 and 9 is um, 12, carry the 1. Uh, before and I have two decimal places so my answer is 42.25 or 42 and 25 hundredths plus b square is equal to 9 times 9 times 9.9 .9. sorry 9.9 .9 times 9.9 .9. well 9 times 9 is 81 carry the 8 9 times 9 is 81 plus the 8 would be 89 the zero there. 9 times 9 is 81, carry the 1. 9 times 9 is 81, plus the 8 is 89 again. 1, 10, carry the 1. 18, carry the 1, and that is 9. So I get, whoops, and then I have two decimal places in my answer, so I'm going to get 98.01. Okay, now now I just use my basic algebra skills. Okay, I want to solve for b, so I need to I need to isolate this variable. The first thing I need to do is ask what's happening to um, b. Well, it's being squared, and I'm also adding 42.25 to it. I need to get rid of that first, so I subtract 42.25. And what I do to one side, I must do to the other. Subtract that from both sides. Sorry about that. And b squared is going to equal. Got to do some borrowing here. There's going to be a one. 9, 7, okay. So 11 minus 5 is 6. 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. And then 9 minus 4 is 
55. Okay, so b squared is equal to 55.76. Okay, and then I need to ask, do you want, what's my inverse operation of squaring something? It's finding the square root, so I find the square root of both of these, and that's going to be b is equal to the square root of 55.76. Now, I know 55.76 is between what two perfect squares? Well, 7 times 7 would be 49, and... That would be 7. 8 times 8 is 64. Okay, so my answer has got to be somewhere between 7 and 8. Okay, so I got 55.76, somewhere in the middle here. Okay, what's going to be my denominator? I have to subtract, take 64 minus 49. And I've got to do some regrouping. 14 minus 9 is 5, 5 minus 4 is 1, so my denominator is going to be 7 and some number of 15s, and then I have to take 55.76 and subtract 49 from it. So I get 0.76 and then regroup 15 minus 9 is 6. Okay, so I get 6.76. That is my answer. It's kind of a weird answer here. Okay, my next step would simply be to divide 6.76 by 15, if I want to estimate that. Girls, as always, I hope that that video was helpful. I hope it helped you with um, tonight's assignment. And I hope you're prepared for the test that's coming up later this week. See you tomorrow in class. If you have any questions, please ask them.